Hey, welcome to the Sata Morning News Show with your host, Captain Naga. Today's episode, I'm wishing you a happy morning, evening, night, midnight, special, whatever time this is. Take this energy now. We all in the same boat. We can start the conversation. This episode, I choose you. I choose you. <laughs> uh, yeah. But hey, man, thanks for tuning in to the Side Time Morning News Show, where we research scientific articles and we chat about them, see what's going on in the world today, in the mainstream, the multi, the mass media, and also in um, scientific articles and studies that a lot of people don't really know about. We're trying to dispel rumors of psychedelics and break stigmatisms without condoning the use of illegal drugs, which we would do not do on the Sata channel for all the marketers. We do not condone the use of illegal drugs. Your body is your body. I am just told you what we do. All we do is research and we chit chat and we talk about our past experiences. Shout out to Kali. All right. So if y'all don't know, check out the YouTube. These are all uploaded on YouTube as well as the exclusive clips that I can't upload on Facebook because they take too long. Take three hours to upload those videos on here so far. But if y'all check them out, it's a lot of motivation on there. I go out in the woods and I do what I do. Um, I just tie. I let things out. Just ties when you combine your mind with your heart and you keep that circle spinning. Whatever comes out, it just comes out. Hey man, shout outs to shout outs to India. They they just legalize gay sex. Not gay marriage, but that gays can have sex without, <laughs> without getting at least 10 years in jail. And this is the world we created. It's time for a change, man. Things are slowly changing. But we're gonna start this thing. The overview today, I wanted to talk about addiction and what that really entails. And then I wanted to talk about this awesome African root that was first used seen used in French. I mean, I said French, in France, and now it's being used in clinics for studies to treat um, addiction, people who are addicted to he people who are using opioids heavily and they're addicted to where no other treatment is working. We're going to dive deep. We're going to see, we're going to tie. And we're going to see what's going on with this in our world that we created. The more you know. All right. The first, it's funny, the first article is from a government site who, if they would have never made any of this illegal, I wouldn't be here. So can we get a little thanks? We all will be in different places. Love the world you in. All right, let's start this off with an addiction. All right, this is from the link I just put. Drug may use and addiction. What is drug addiction? Addiction is defined as a chronic relapsing disorder of characterized compulsive drug seeking and use despite adverse consequences. It is considered a brain disorder because it involves functional changes to brain circuits involved in reward, stress, and self-control. And those changes may last a long time after a person has stopped taking the, taking drugs. Addiction is a lot like other diseases, such as a heart disease. Both disrupt the normal and healthy functioning of an organ in the body. Both have serious harmful effects, and both are in many cases preventable and treatable. If left untreated, they can last a lifetime and may lead to death. Yeah, my view on this, we're all, we're all here and these bodies are programs. The way I look at it is our bodies are like a computer. If you want to think about the soul, the spirit, whatever it is in the other realm, whatever um, name you put on it controls this body just like a robot or just like a computer. And a computer, you just you run programs. We're used to running programs based off our feelings and traumas. We see what works, what doesn't work. 
and we latch on to those by puberty or sometimes around 18, 20, 20 something for some people. And then we stick to those for the rest of our life. And sometimes, most of the time, we're not in the best situations where grow, like I grew up in the projects. I grew up straight in projects. So I seen people getting shot. I seen people shooting up. I seen people smoking wet. I seen people taking advantage of people on drugs as they walk down the street, robbing them, you know, molesting them, doing multiple wild out things. So it's all it is is it's about the person too. Cause I had a, no, it is about your environment. I was able to escape a lot. Skateboarding allowed me to find my way out of the rut I was in. That and video games. So shouts to them. But other than that, man, when you don't have somebody guiding you from like a higher perspective your environment is all that you have and we grow up to be strong in our environments because we don't want to be weak so to be strong we take on what we see looks like works for other people and for most people that involves harmful drugs like heroin um xanaxes a lot of different opiates and the opiate epidemic in america is killing so many people and it affects so many people that i know back in philadelphia and when i out here even on the mountains where i'm at sometimes if you see some of the um people you can tell when somebody's taking some pills or something because they would just start talking in the street and stuff and try to talk to people, but still be like, seem like they talking to themselves. Like you, you can tell when somebody is on some kind of, um, some kind of massive upper and it's heroin and these opiates that hit all them crazy receptors and make people go Google Gaga. But, um, and the thing is for them, they can't stop it. They can't stop because we see in this thing, once you latch on to some traits, your um, brain switches. Like uh, a lot of people are addicted to social media and their phones and a lot of other things because of dopamine receptors in our head. Like when you do something cool, when you do something that you love, you literally get a hit in your brain and you get high off of it. And you're like, oh, that felt good. And then you go and do it again. That can be tying your shoes. That can be shopping. That can be skateboarding. That can be eating. Um, it can even go up to breathing. <laughs> like, yeah, that felt good. I'm gonna breathe again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it comes in many different forms. Uh, wait, I lost my track. Oh man, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I was just talking about addiction, comes in many different forms. Oh, uh, that's that, that marijuana, <laughs> but um. Wow. Dang, I'm just trying to remember the train I was on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the Pacific thing. Dopamine hits. And when the dopamine hits, you get them, you go back for them. I made a whole, got an episode on this on the YouTube titled um, Dopamine Hits. Just just tie that. It's just tie. Just type in dopamine hits, just tie. should come right up. And... In that, I was seeing how I had to, I, I don't have a phone. Like, my phone is, is cracked to begin with. Like, it's, I use it just for Instagram, just to get stuff on Instagram. But I used to work for technology um, for the school district. So I was always fixing computers. I had an iPhone. I had a, two iPads. I was all up in it. And I was addicted. I was in it. And I was loving it. And once I stopped using all them things um, on that level, I see how I was addicted to. I was wasting a lot of time just doing useless things or not really putting my own. The thing about it, I wasn't, you don't, you come to the point where you're not really outputting your own creativity. You're just inputting a lot. You're just taking in a lot. You're just observing and taking in. And you have no, and with that, you have no input or no say or what goes on in your reality because you're just taking it in. You're just finding good things that other people did and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to just go with that instead of coming up with your own thing. And if y'all see, oh yes, 
Music on. Man wants to work. All right, let's cut that off. And if y'all remember yesterday's episode, it was on neuroplasticity in the brain caused by psilocybin and um, sometimes DMT use. I'm not sure. I just threw that in there. But it, I believe the study was mostly on neuroplasticity in rats and other mammals and how they saw that it rewired, it literally rewired the brain so that other neurons were able to connect with other neurons and be people were able to be open to more in turn that can be like people being able to open to more experience their depression is taken away because they don't see the world as just this one view they see there's infinite possibilities and if they just focus on the happy thoughts the happy thoughts is going to carry them through check that episode out all right um so now what's, what's this thing about evil gang what can we learn about that I know that, um, and the reason I want to go to Evil Game, it came up in a kind of cool chat yesterday, and everybody was like kind of dumbfounded. So we're gonna we're gonna see what's going on with this. All right, history and stats. The first reports of Evil Game use in the West came, and this is from they're they're kind of legit site. Post the link right here from the third wave. The first reports of Igbo gain use in the West came from French and Belgian explorers observing African cere spiritual ceremonies in the second half of the 19th century. The chemical compound was first isolated in 1901 by two independent research groups, but a complete synthesis was not accomplished until 1966. So we see that it came from Africa. They were using a lot of spiritual ceremonies, and these French people, explorers, came over. It was like, yo, we can use this. It was still sold as a stimulant in France known as Lembarini, which was an extract of the Tabernathi money plant. Then hmm. it was made illegal in 1966. Wow. Yeah, around the same time, it was made legal by the FDA. Hmm. Evil Gain's anti-addictive effects were discovered accidentally by 19, in the 1960s by a 19-year-old heroin addict named Howard Lopsoff. Salute to you, Howard Lopsoff. He and five of his addict friends all noticed a reduction in their heroin craving and withdrawal symptoms after taking Evo Game for recreational purposes. Hmm. Being the enterprising heroin addict that he was, Lopsoff. Lots off signed a contract with the Belgian pharmaceutical company to produce a tablet for clinical trials in the Netherlands. In 1985, he was awarded a United States patent for the product. Wow. In 1981, 44 grams of Eboga extracted was produced by an unnamed European manufacturer. And oh, this is a cool story. The entire stock was purchased by a single buyer, Carl Watsonberg, who distributed it as an Indra extract to treat heroin ad addicts and Krishna, <laughs> Krishna Nia, Denmark, a small village with a high number of heroin addicts. A number of local movements took hold in the early mid 1990s in offshore locations in the U.S., mostly aimed at treating heroin addicts. In total, more than 3,000 private clinics and retreats were established, and an entire medical subculture flourished. Nor numerous accounts of individuals fighting and overcoming addictions surfaced. Hmm. That was cool. That guy was, what was his name? Carl. <laughs> hey, Carl. Oh, thanks for saving that village, man. Let your name live on. Thanks for tuning in, man. 
y'all just getting in, thanks for tuning in. Or if y'all skipped ahead, thanks for tuning in to the Sata Morning News Show. I believe in all you tires. I believe that y'all can do whatever it is that y'all put your mind to. And the thing about it is just don't stress that much about how difficult it's going to be or how much preparation you have to do. Everybody, everybody in the NBA had to start with learning how to dribble a ball. <laughs> Before you even learn how to shoot, you got to learn to dribble. All right, I'm going down this page just to see if it's any more things I want to read on here. All right, let's skip to the other part. Mm -hmm. Just give me, give me a second. Bear with me. skim through this one. Let's skim through this. I'm going to just put it over here. But hey, what's so raw is that all of this is illegal. I don't know. It's like, why when something good is discovered that can change the hearts of people, let alone the mind of the people, is made illegal? It's like love is made illegal. True love is made illegal, and it's replaced with a falsehood, something false that tries to play itself off as love. Just tie it. It, it tries to play itself off as love, but it's not. It's just a cover up. <laughs> and it harbors and it loves addictions and. A lot of this other things that's just hurting us. It loves it. And then when we go out and do it, we feel loved. We're like, yeah, this is just what I love doing. Is it really? Is it really? I believe it's a lot of thoughts out here. Here. Hold on one second, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> I believe there's a lot of stuff out here that's just made to get you. Well, not made to get you, but once you have to, I think it's made for you to explore that part of consciousness because you're everything. But once you experience it, that's when you have to have the will to be a go to a point of awareness where you you don't participate in that action anymore. It's just a thought that passes through your mind and goes in one ear and out the other. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, I'm this thought. You're not all your thoughts. I'm coming. I don't think I'm all my thoughts. I really do believe that. I believe consciously I'm all my thoughts, but I don't know. Something weird I've been thinking about. I'm just tying. Just think about it, man. I'm trying to fi I'm fixing this up. Okay, did I send did I copy that link? Do 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 all right let's copy this over now <laughs> jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes and ha 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 spaghetti 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 hey mouth <laughs> That was his niggas that get the reference. Okay. We're going to read the abstract of this. The abstract. This is a study that was done. 
It's titled Treatment of Opioid Use Disorder with Ibogaine, which is Eboga, Detoxification and Drug Use Outcomes by Thomas Kingsley Brown, PhD. Y'all know that means stuff on this room. And Kenneth Aller, MD. And I respect him too. This was made in September 11, 2016. Our abstract background Ibogaine is a monoterpene terpene endoid alkaloid used in med medical and non-medical settings for treatment of opioid use disorder. Its mechanism of action is apparently novel. There are no published prospective studies of drug use outcomes with Ibogaine. Objective, this was the objective, to study outcomes following opioid detoxification with Evil gain methods. In this observational study, 30 subjects with DSM IV opioid dependence, 25 males, 5 females, received a total, they could have made it even, let me crack if I mean, females, received a mean dose of, why I got put this, 1,540 plus minus 920 mg evil gain HIC. All right, I'm, I'm going to see if I'm skipping over the number. Subjects use oxycodone and or heroin in respective amounts of 180 milligrams per day and 0.94 grams a day and average 2.6 previous episodes of treatment for opioid dependence. I mean, they did a lot of heroin. They was doing a lot of oxycodone and didn't work. Detoxification and the follow-up outcomes at 1, 3, 6, 9, and 12 months were evaluated in utilizing the Subjective Opioid Withdrawal Scale, SOWS, and Addiction Severity Index Composite, AASIC scores, respectively. And these were the results summarized. SAL scores decreased from 11.6 pretreatment to 9.8 at 30 hours post-treatment. At one month post-treatment follow-up, 15 subjects, 50% reported no opioid use during the third previous 30 days. I ASIC drug use and legal and family social status scores were improved relative to pre-treatment baseline at all post-treatment time points. Improvement in drug Use scores was maximal at one month and subsequently sustained from three to 12 months at levels that did not reach equivalence to the effect at one month. Conclusion, evil gain was associated with subjective effects on opioid withdrawal symptoms and drug use in subjects for whom other treatments have been unsuccessful and may provide a useful prototype for discovery and development of innovative pharma therapy of addiction and this is a guy with a phd and a guy with an md and if you keep going they talk about how yeah and but how i understood how i understood Ebo game before this is that it resets your brain that we was talking about this yesterday in the chat like it it clears everything like it clears <laughs> I'm no, I'm not using big word, but it clears everything, everything out, and it throws you back in the world. And for that's why they say it takes like 12 hours. Um, shout outs to your mate Tom. See his experience with psych substance, where he took evil game, and it threw him to for him it threw him into a depression state for a couple months. But to each his own, and I'm so happy that he got out strong. He got out of that. But um, other. Other words, it, it throws you back into this reality reset where you have to relearn a lot of things. But with rest, it comes back. You always come back from psychedelics. That's the thing. A lot of people think you go out forever. You go out in the hyperspace, and then your body is just melting away while you like, oh, like, no, you come back. You come back. Unless you, you die, which nobody has off of any psychedelic alone. They have from mixing it and from doing wild things but from just taking the drug it, the drug has never killed anybody you had to eat more than your weight in mushrooms to kill yourself the ld50 rate is is way too high <laughs> hey 
Hey, Ashley, thanks for tuning in for a bit. All right, I'm seeing, yeah, they talk about how evil game, the certain receptors that it hits. And since we're scientists, <laughs> wait, let's see what they said. Wait, let's see their discussion. They have a discussion tab. Yeah, the, uh, this observational study reports on follow-up data subsequent to decodification with evil game of 30 individuals. Uh, nope, change my mind. Yeah, yeah y'all can check that out. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, because I got some more time. We got some more time. Let's see what else we can find. But, um, yeah, <clears throat> something I'm just thinking about is creating your own history. We're just going to ramble on. If anybody jump in, if y'all got any articles, if y'all ever have any questions, just send them my way. Just let me know if what y'all want the next show to be about. If y'all have a personal concern if with psychedelics or with life, seeing weird things, just send it my way. We a whole family, and I'll point you to some cool people as well as myself that will be able to help y'all guys out. So... Do that. Just tie. Just tie. You don't have to do it. Just tie. <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about was history and how you need to go out for your, you should go out for your own experiences in whatever form that is. A lot of people shy away from spiritual practices because of religion and the organization of it and how they see and it brought us to the point of where we are in reality now. So anything spiritual, a lot of people just brush off. They're like, no, nah, this is it. This is the only reality. This is all that's going to happen. But no, it's more, it's more to this reality, to this. And you need to go out with your own experience because history, the way that is told, is told to keep us Thinking the way that you see this so-called sleep thinking. If you're thinking about the matrix or if you had a point in your own life where you're thinking about that in your life. And it's so wild because you think you would think that you're good. It's a lot of you would think that you're doing good. Until you see that everything that you was doing was false. This was just an illusion. <laughs> and you could have had so much, so much more fun doing what you wanted to do. Instead of doing something that you think that you had to do. And for a lot of people, they think, oh, if I do what I want to do, I won't make any money. I won't be able to provide a lifestyle for my kid. I mean, a lifestyle for myself that in turn can create generational wealth. But look at the people that are creating generational wealth. They're not the people that's just working nine to fives. They're not the people that sleep thinking that the world is always against them or that they can't feel happy at times. It is a, it is those bankers, though. I don't believe they're happy. Well, to each his own. They they are happy in their own respect. They believe that they are. But, um... Yeah, to each his own. Just tie in. I just tie it. Do do. All right, this is episode nine of the Side Time Morning News Show. Hold on for one second. We're gonna keep the energy going, the energy flowing. All 
Oh yeah, I wanted to um <laughs> it's a funny it's a funny article, but I thought it was just in the new in the Rolling Stone magazine, but it seems like everybody talking about it. But y'all know about Paul McCartney Paul McCarthy and from the Beatles. If y'all don't know, y'all about to know he's the last surviving Beatles member. And that was he, he had John Legend. I said John Legend. John Lennon. <laughs> And all of them. But he's still alive and he has a big influence. He's still selling out massive arenas. He's still doing, he's still pu pushing out CDs and he's been solo for the longest. And before, the funny thing about the Beatles is that they were there in the 60s. And a lot of people um, attribute them to the psychedelic era and everything but the thing about it if you see the interviews back then <laughs> besides the one where they actually described the lsd trip they made a song called lucy in the sky with diamonds lucy l in the sky s with diamonds lsd but yet they wanted to say that that song <laughs> was not about lsd so uh, but they still doing that in today's world. They still doing that today. But today is more about um, disguises sex. But it's a lot of esoteric things, too. just depends on what music you decide to incorporate into yourself. But, uh, yeah, Paul McCartney, he, he, now he telling people, he said, Paul McCartney, this is from NBC, Connecticut. I go from Rolling Stone to NBC, Connecticut. Oh, we're going to flow with it. <laughs> Here it goes right there. So Paul McCartney talks of, talks of seeing God during psychedelic trip. Anybody else would say it's just a drug, the hallucination, but we felt we had seen a higher thing. <laughs> Former Beatle Paul McCartney had told a British newspaper he believes he once saw God during a psychedelic trip. The 76-year-old star told the Sunday Times he was humbled by the experience. He said, it was a huge, massive wall that I couldn't see the top of, and I was at the bottom. And anybody else would say it's just a drug, the hallucination, but we felt we had seen a higher thing. <laughs> the Beatles music was heavily influenced by psychedelic drugs in the band's following years. McCartney also spoke of allowing himself to become to believe that he wait that his love wait. McCartney also spoke of allowing himself to believe that his lost loved ones, including his late wife Linda, are looking down on him. Y'all saw um say so y'all saw Wakanda. Y'all all saw Black Panther. Your ancestors are there. They are there in essence. And then that in essence is not a downplay on words. They're there in essence. That essence is, in fact, the place. Um, the singer's now promoting who I don't know about. I ain't promoting it on here. You can pay me. But he's a, that's, he's a good guy, yes. He's a good guy. <laughs> and I know a lot of people... I'm really not going to vibe with that, saying that you can reach God with a um, psychedelic. But no, he didn't even use the word God. He said a higher thing. He he, he knows his language. He's a higher thing. There's no telling who what um, creatures and entities we really interacting with in these realms. Like some, you can reach a point where you see the simulation and you come in contact with a being that is fully all-encompassing love. But what if it's something behind that? <laughs> well, I know some people, they reach a point where they see the beings and the machine elves that work on this reality. And I can see how things like if you go to the ancient alien theory about the Anunnaki, those from heaven came those who from heaven came, that's what the Anunnaki means, and ancient Samaria texts and everything in summer. And this is all ties in with the Bible and everything. I'm just tying, to, tying it all together. That 
um, I know how the ancient aliens things say that they came from. They always talking about metal ships and everything and technology and everything. But what if that technology is something that really is extra dimensional and they really don't exist in this dimension. And when you ingest these psychedelic chemicals, you reach that dimension where they exist, where the so-called gods exist. But they're not gods, but they exist to our level of consciousness when we're not aware of the huge picture as gods. And that's why you see a lot of people out here, I'm tying again, <clears throat> that go around and cause a lot of destruction and anger when they say, oh, God doesn't exist. God is not real. And they become so angry. But for me, I found I went through that same trap. I was like, no, God doesn't exist because God wouldn't be killing people. God wouldn't um, enslave people or, or demand this and demand that and demand this. And then you see in the Sumerian text, the Anunnaki guys demanded that they look for mine gold for them and that they was building a slave race and that they engineered the previous species that was there in order to be slaves and work for them. Like it's a, it's a lot I'll be talking about. This goes real deep. But what if those... Instead of like all that ancient alien stuff that is actual technology that we just lost and is never found again. Um, what if it, it still is there, but you just can't see it because we're not in tune with that frequency anymore. We're vibrating at a lower frequency where we're not in tune with our light body. So we're, we can't travel to those places. But all the DMT reports that I've read, they say that they go to a place of higher dimensions. And I was thinking, um, something I wanted to throw in there is Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he was trying to describe how to create more lanes of traffic and how we keep thinking in two dimensions by creating more lanes side by side. When really we should start stacking because we live in a three-dimensional world. I think I went over this in another side time morning show, but I'll do it again. He's talking about um stacking, um, stacking street lanes instead of just putting them straight, thinking in three dimensions. And he was saying how if we were able to work in four dimensions, he said this so plainly, and that's because the math is already our math. Human math is already caught up to explaining four dimensions. It's just that we can't visualize it. And that's what I'm about to get to. But the math now, the highest physicists and the theoretical physicists, they're working in eight dimensions. And a lot of people are like, how are they just, how can you just create dimensions with math? But that's why a lot of people say you don't need a psychedelic to experience these realms. But I believe you do. But when you really push yourself and keep yourself lucid and stay doing something that you love, I believe that something opens up and trickles down so that to that one thing, that one thing you'll be able to channel that spirit. But I believe with psychedelics, you're able to channel everything so you're able to deal with your family life and balance out your life instead of just balancing out that one art. That's why a lot of artists are depressed because they're able to do these amazing art pieces and able to channel the spirit and everything, but they don't know how to channel that and keep those channels open when it comes to other parts in their life. Psychedelics, in my experience, is it's an ultimate balancer. <laughs> but back to these technologies and everything, is that um, I'm just, it's an article. It's on the page, I have to find it, where one of the ancient alien scholars that appears on the actual show has a whole um, slideshow presentation where he's talking about how he wishes on ancient aliens that they talked about the light dimensions and spirituality more than just saying is physical technology. Um. Yeah, because, yeah, I was thinking, I was talking about 
um, I was talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson and the scientist that's just a straight scientist. And he never said that. And he said in here that he never said he don't believe in God. He never said that he was atheist. But um, when he was talking about the fourth dimensions and how we'd be able to stack the layers on top. Yeah, I'm backtracking to catch us up. But the <clears throat> backtrack and whew, stack the stack it in layers in three dimensions but if we were able to move in four dimensions we'd be able to go travel a lot faster from place to place so i got a wrong paper again so say you're traveling from here from here to here in four dimensions space would in three dimensions you will see it as space bending in four dimensions as you would just be war it will seem natural but you'll be warping through space and you'll go you'll be able to travel from one side whoop, to the other you know you've seen this demonstration in all the movies you'll be able to just travel from one side to the other and pass through bang and then face space would just unfold itself back to how it was and you'll just be on the other side almost more than spontaneously. Shout out to this hawk feather, right? I am now Master. Master Chief. Let's gonna keep that like that. Oh um, <laughs> okay. Um yeah, but what he was what Neil deGrasse Tyson said was if we evolved, I mean, our brains evolved in three-dimensional space, so we're not able to comprehend the four-dimensional space that he was talking about, except by that kind of lame example that you see by punching the paper through the hole. <laughs> but if we were four-dimensional beings, we'd be able to see everything. And I was surprised that Joe Rogan didn't say, well, in DMT world, you can, it seems as though you travel traveling through dimensional space but i believe our consciousness through these psychedelic drugs is opening up to being able to realize these four or five dimensional spaces that we weren't able to experience for however long we have and since the Atlanta, atlantean times or some some something something like that i don't know i don't know i'm just tired <laughs> But that soon, we talked about this in the chat yesterday. Soon, just like the, and that's what I always felt, like the X-Men, that people are going to start waking up. People are going to start having these strange powers, going to be able to move stuff with their mind, going to be able to have pyrokinesis. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just a kook. Maybe I'm on to something. Uh, and probably won't reach that level in our lifetime, or it probably will. But on some level, we're waking up to four, five-dimensional consciousness, and we may, and we, we don't, we're not able to move in them with our 3D bodies, and that's what we're finding out. We're not going to go to space with huge rocket ships, go to other planets with huge rockets and all this other stuff. It's going to be in your mind. You're just going to go in your mind. You're going to be able to travel through hyperspace and travel to these other worlds. And get in these light body vehicles. Or be able to control technology here. I don't know. I'm just thinking about the movies. How they warp technology. Be able to move into four dimensional space. Like you and the machine are one. And y'all both vibrate at a higher level. To be able to transfer through four dimensional space. Instead of having to go through three dimensional space. Transformers. <laughs> I do believe that technology does have a form of consciousness, a form of sentience to it, too, that we don't realize. Just tired. Alt's getting lucid. But what if, man? What if? Because I know, to my experience, God is something that if you even try to describe him in words... Besides God, because we all have a consensus on how that feels in our heart, that God is the un, the unknowable yet knowable. 
and it's he's complete love and that's it consciously he expresses himself as everything and that's how we all create it and it's just on this level that we see it as being good or bad but it's just expressions of of the of the all as they say it in the esoteric sense and we all exist in the mind of the all <laughs> like think of it like shake think of it like shakespeare this is just a little hermeticism think of it like shakespeare how this is taken from the Kabbalion. How when um, Othello, Shakespeare, and all of them, they all existed in the mind of Shakespeare, but yet they seem to have their own individual lives. They all made choices. Like if you never knew about Shakespeare and you just read Othello book and you thought he it was like a biography, and then you see that somebody wrote that and that it was actually fiction. Imagine what life would mean. Imagine what life would mean. But um, that's how I see it. And that we're all just his, his mental projections and that it's different levels to reach up to that level of him. And that's when you see like higher dimensional beings that look down on other beings and aliens, like in the movies. And y'all see his rinks and uh, people, others like, oh, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Y'all don't know how to feel. Y'all just running around all crazy and things like that. If only y'all knew how reality really was or, or they don't really say how far y'all knew because they see how, they just see our game from just another perspective. Most people put that in the term of angels and the hierarchy of angels, like angels and archangels and um, demons and the levels of demons. But in my view, demons, or I say demons, um, a lot of that has just been, has just been taught the wrong way because of Christian religion and all the other religions trying to just keep people from experiencing knowledge at its true capacity. And knowledge is just, for me, knowledge is experiencing the self, is experiencing the all, which is itself. Because this is not the self. Like, this is not myself. I'm just a gambler of thoughts. I have cells doing their own things that I have no control over. My blood... White blood cells are always at war, fighting to make sure that it stays at a certain count. My hair is just growing. I can't control how fast my hair grows. It's just growing, doing its own thing. I have, is, I have muscles contracting and taking on protein and converting them. I have no control over that or how it was done over the organs. It's just a lot of things that just happens. And all... I believe I am is just awareness. It's just where awareness, and I'm just being aware of the mechanisms that's happening. Just Ty, just Ty. We going real, really, really deep in the rabbit hole with this one today, this morning, or tonight, afternoon. As it gets really. It's really, it gets really, it gets really real, because then it changes how you decide to live your life, because you're still here. That's the thing about ego death. You don't really die, and well, you you in ego death, you experience. Let me describe ego death. You experience what it is to not play the role of Captain Naga. Or the role of the person that's playing Captain Naga. Or the person that's playing the role of you. Of going the job, of having a family. You reach a place where an eagle death where you would, and from this perspective, you would say you cease to exist. You move you on a higher dimensional plane. I'm trying to see how to write. Yeah, and a lot of the ancient texts, they talk about this. 
And they say that this is one of the goals that you can do. They always say how the ancient masters were able to send this reality and talk to God and do all these amazing things. And that's exactly what's going on. Either through use of meditation or through use of plant meditation, plant medicines mixed with plant with meditations. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was talking about the ancient people in the text. And remember, um, a lot of people that experience ego death, they're not able to bring back a lot of what they experienced. But I believe that a lot of people that were trained in these ancient world. In the ancient world, they were trained before they experienced these realms because they didn't just go buy a, a chemical off the street corner or something. They had a master and they had a priest or somebody that life was dead or been dedicated to this task for whatever which reason. A lot, a lot of time in the past, they said it was because of the bloodline and stuff like that. But nowadays, we know it don't matter about your bloodline. We all created equal. Um, so when they experienced these rims of ego death, they were able to bring back certain things and then their life was transformed in the same way we see people nowadays being transformed off of their psychedelic experiences. It's just that back then you were able to be more alone a lot often. So you were able to live your life off of your own ideas. Nowadays, we're so connected with social media and we're so much under social pressures to shop and to dress this way and to talk this way that people that experience these realms, sometimes they end up in psychiatric wars because they feel as though they can't fit back in and they go and they seem as though they're crazy to the world or the family don't understand them or they see that they don't know how to get a right kind of job or create a right kind of living for them because they're not able to express themselves in ways that still connects them to their loved ones or people that's able to help them out. So they seem far out or so to speak like that. Or it's just a lot of circumstances in this world that's not built up for you to do you and to build up a life or cir life circumstances that suit you they wanted to suit somebody else and then you just go get massages and try to build your life up just to take care of the whips that they're giving you throughout the day oh <laughs> oh this is fun just tired this is still the sata morning podcast And remember, but remember, this can all be malarkey. This can all be crap. I can all be just telling. I can I can just be telling myself lies, but based off my experiences, this is most true. I don't know the true, true, true nothing. This is just the most true, and that's why once we start connecting more, we'll be able to share ideas and come together and really get a bigger picture a bunch of open-minded people coming together what can what can you want to come out with something we're going to come out with something hey make sure y'all get out in nature make sure y'all getting out in nature make sure y'all letting the sun hit you Hold on, I'm looking for something real quick. Oh, man. There it is. Loading.
All right, I guess I'll wrap up this thing about ego death. Because you still exist here. But you incorporate, for me, I'm seeing with meditation, I'm just meditating and just becoming aware of every action that I do and making sure that I'm making the right choices to me feels like I'm incorporating my higher self. That in turn, that's just what it feels like. I'm going I'm to just put it in not too complicated hippie language. It just feels like um, when I make the right, when I become aware of if I'm moving right, why I'm moving right. Um, when did I start moving right? Why am I not moving left? Well, I, once I be once I started meditating and really becoming aware of all those little circumstances and little programs, I was able to change it, change it, and etch out some things that I didn't like and see how it was affecting other people. And in turn, it's creating a better lifestyle for myself. I'm feeling more uplifted during the day. I'm feeling a lot more happy. I don't walk with my head down anymore. I'm working out. I'm going hitting. I'm going to the gym. I never thought I'd go to the gym, guys. I thought I was going to be like a skinny 130, 133 person all my life. But I gained. I'm one, um, 41 now. Just been working out at the gym for like six weeks, and I'm a vegan. So, you know, for me, I'm just thinking most of that got to be muscle. There's nothing else. I weighed the same weight since high school. <laughs> But that, that's just good things, good things. I'm feeling good about that. All right, we're approaching the hour mark soon. And I think with that, I'm going to say, do what you do and do it good. <laughs> do it openly. And if you can't do it openly, do something else. Uplift your neighbor. Say hi to a stranger. Take a dive in the cold pool. Turn off the TV. Draw something. Do a random painting. Do a random jog. Just throwing, just tossing out ideas. Do something that you always said you wanted to do but said you didn't have the time to do. Because no, time doesn't really, time bends to your will. You know when you're having fun, it just seems to fly by. Or when you're in the zone and meditating, it seems like five minutes was 10 hours. But it feels so good, doesn't it? So why don't we just keep doing things that motivate us and keep us feeling good? And this is a safety precaution. Don't rely on any outside thing to feel good. Things should let you experience what it is to feel good and to let go of things. And in those realms, um, I experience being able to let go of a lot of things, but you have to build up, try building up a lifestyle where you're doing things throughout the day that make you happy and not settling on things that make you sad, not sitting around and thinking about looping thoughts in your head that create sad, depressed thoughts. Because imagine if you was able to see that depression physically. Well, yeah, physically, however you want to put it, with your own two eyes, but your own third eye. Imagine being able to see that monster that you keep thinking about every day. Imagine how you think about yourself if you're thinking down on yourself or you think that you're not worth it or you think that you're a monster or anything like that. Imagine if you was able to visualize what that was. Would you be able to look at that person and say, oh, I love it. I mean, that's me. Or you say, oh, that's not me. I came to a point where I had to look at that monster 
and love it, but at the same time say, I got to love you from a distance, as they put it. I got to love you from a distance. I know you're there, but I can't work with you. I don't want to work with you. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be that. Because now I know how happy life can be. Just to take a stroll down the street. Look up at the sky, see a cloud, see an airplane going by. Have the wonderment of a child. Don't they say in the Bible, the King James Bible stuff, it says, um, you cannot, ent I'm, um, I was about to say page rising. <laughs> I'm coming up my own words for this. Um, he said, least thee enter as a child, thou cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me look this up. I really look it up. Here it is. That's in Matthew 18, 3. I just Googled that. Thank you, Google. In King James, and said, Verily I said unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And to me, that's just coming back to that childhood wonderment of life. We all say, oh, man, when I was a kid, I used to be able to do this. I used to be able to run. I used to be able to just draw. I used to be able to just zone out and have fun. Life was living. And now I'm an adult and I'm trying to stop my kid from growing too fast. We can go back to those moments and have them now like that same essence of moments. We can still have those now because that's what we need to do. And traumas and the way that America is set up, it's just so freaking, it's just so sad how it's set up to keep us depressed. When you watch the news is, I don't watch the news anymore. I don't watch the, the, like the local news channels and stuff like that because it's depression. It's straight up just depression. All they showing. I grew up in Philadelphia where we always had the worst of the worst news where it was always a drive by shooting, somebody getting shot, somebody still trying to rob a store. It was always some some crazy going on. Car accidents. They love talking about the traffic. Like, okay, we get it, it's a traffic jam. But right. And I was thinking about the movie Tomorrowland by Disney that you should check out. And how it was a guy that gave that built a machine that can see the future. But then at the so wrap it up, they saw at the end of the movie that um what you thought or yeah, how you felt changed what was shown on the prediction screen. And a lot of people on the earthly realm, because it was two different realms on Tomorrowland, on the earthly realm, they were always seeing negative negativity. So that's what was being created in the future, negativity. So eventually they had the, the guy gave up and eventually he had to think the girl motivated him because, you know, the girl always mo represents that, that higher feeling, that, that love, that connection and that dominance over the emotions and knowing what to do with them. I mean, and knowing that she is the, her emotions. That's what the women always represent to me is like, is the emotion, like become the emotion, not just thinking about it or planning out. But, um, yeah, we just getting live in here. In, in that movie, yeah, it was, it was just how the projections, when they thought good thoughts, it changed the future outcome. It was a, it was a number scale or something like that. Y'all got to check out the movie. 
I really want to look. I would really want to watch it again. I was thinking about it last night during the chit chat. But now, nowadays, that's exactly what's going on. And it's like it's encouraged. It really is encouraged because people will say, oh, you got to watch the news. You got to know what's going on in your neighborhood, don't you? <laughs> but once you figure out what too much is going on in your neighborhood, my tip to you is to move out. Move somewhere else. Try something else. If it's really not fitting you, if it's really so much depression around you, know that that has an effect on you. And until we at the point where we able to gather, well, I'm not going to say gather people, but where we're able to know ourselves to the point where we're not as affected by outside predicaments, then we can come back and do some good. That's like how they say a celebrity or somebody that got money that come back to their hood is still well respected. Just a little metaphor, a little analogy. Mm. But I moved, like I said before, I moved from the projects in Philadelphia to California. And I was setting up the environment for this because we didn't really know what we were moving to. We just wanted to move somewhere that wasn't that much expensive. So we didn't move to a big city like L.A. or something like that. But I was going out to Fairmount Park, if y'all are from Philly. It's only fair, It's a lot of city and there's spots in there where it's called, all called Fairmount Park. But it's all like some in West Philly, Southwest, some by the Eagles Field. It's those three huge ponds that I found out about later in life. But I was traveling to those a lot, to those spaces a lot, because I was learning about meditation. And this was before I dealt with psychedelics. I would go out there and I would just meditate and I just felt happy. And I just felt happy and connected. I felt relaxed. I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. A lot was going on in my life. I had um, a new daughter. Um, I was trying to work for the school district. I was going through a lot and just with my own um, issues with trying to figure out who I was as a person because I had all these thoughts about the universe for since I was a teenager. I've always been contemplating the universe, contemplating the universe in the weird ways. Like I was a Ripley's, believe it or not, watching an everyday kind of type person. And uh, watching alien shows that would come on three in the morning. And they would only come on like one, three in the morning. I remember my aunt first showing me and she would watch it. And it was talking about an alien that came to somebody's room and they couldn't move and stuff like that. It was like a sleep paralysis type deal. And it was pretty dope. But um, dealing with the forest, I was able to finally get my brain chemicals going right if you want to look at it like that and just journeying around there um i guess reminded me of when i was a kid because i moved to the projects when i was around like 11 years old if all they moved out around around um what was that I moved out a couple times because I moved to my grandma a couple times. But besides that, I just moved to Cali like two years ago. And I'm finally out of Philadelphia as a whole. Mm. But um, going to the forest and everything, it reminded me of when I used to live when I was younger because it was a, a, I used to live down the street from Fairmont Park. I didn't have to travel for like a half hour to get to a park. So as a kid, I was always running around and it was a whole bunch of legends and myths about like Dead Man's Hill, about the guy who rode the bike down the hill and hit the tree. And now his spirit is always there. And you got to be careful when you're riding down because he might bump into you and stuff like that. And the thing of seeing bears and spirits and stuff in the forest, like these were stories 
I remember us telling each other as a child, and I was always the one to go out in the woods and see what was going on. And most time it was by myself because other people were scared. My other friends were scared to do it. I always felt like I was Tommy Pickles from the Rugrats. <laughs> I always was the one to say, come on, guys, let's do this. Let's go, my screwdriver. <laughs> wait, wait, I think I actually got... Yeah, with my, with my screwdriver, I got a screwdriver right here. Like, come on, let's 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 break out of this level of consciousness. Let's let's break out of what these adults want us to do. Let's go to the park. I lived at the park. It always seemed like it was a place where I could just play around. And looking back in history, that's where we come from. Before we build houses. And all domesticated all these animals and was able to stay in one place. We lived in jungles and stuff like the aboriginals now, nowadays. Ah, oh, I'm trying to see where I was going with that. All right. Hey, y'all, thanks for still watching. Thanks for listening to this conversation if y'all still in. If you want to support the stream... I have a Patreon page, just Todd Nail. Um, you can look that up. Or just share the video. Share this video. Please, please, please. Or join the, con join the next conversation. But anyways, after that, get your, besides anything, get your butt out in nature. <laughs> take your family out in nature if you have kids take y'all i take my whole family out in nature now we just go out and we just sit whatever comes out comes out just go for walks and just do what you can always don't have some any real expectations and that's what i really like about going out in the forest is that you go out and you don't expect anything but to enjoy yourself and you see that it's a huge landscape. It seems like it's a huge playground where a lot of things are possible. You can start a little, uh, I don't really advise this California because of the fire, but um, you can start a campfire, get some friends. Y'all can tell stories like the good old days, or y'all can play some music or um, climb some trees, see some sights, look for animals, look for some birds, take some pictures. Do some skits for videos or something like that. But take advantage of nature. That's what it, that's what you're for. And not in the way that we're doing now with littering and cutting down all the trees for no reason. And uh, just not just not doing well, just not doing anything to give back after all that we have taken. Got to give back. And like you ever, you ever um, give somebody something and then, and then give nothing back. <laughs> like it, it works for a while. You can keep giving. The earth is like, I'm going to keep giving. I'm going to keep giving or whatever. It's like, I'm going to keep giving. But after a while, you, if you ain't giving nothing back. We go ahead. I'm a. I'm a start. I'm gonna have to start her up something. And in what form does that entitle? That's just some apocalypse. <laughs> but the apocalypse is not really that. That's not really the, the apocalypse. I really believe the apocalypse is going to be when a lot of people wake up to this idea that a lot of people, as I, are trying to just talk about and explore. A little more than the average Joe. And I believe that the more that this happens, the more the overall level of human consciousness is just going to raise up a little bit, a little bit, little increment, little increment, little increment, and just keep going until we burst out of this bubble of reality. Cause this is some kind of this some kind of trap, but it's the I believe right now the point is just to have fun. In a way, that doesn't hurt anybody else, and also in a way that 
benefits you so that you can remain healthy. Because when you're healthy in turn, that means everything is flowing, your mind, your body, and your soul, if you want to look at it like that. <clears throat> everything will be flowing together. That's what true health really is. That's why you a person that eats good, it doesn't really mean anything if they're not exercising. person is exercising, vice versa. And if you're not meditating over all of that, then you're going to mess up your exercising routine and you're going to mess up your eating habits and probably fall back into previous habits and mess up the whole cycle. So you see how you need all three to go together. Just look at that as the another thing is the mind, body, and soul. Another three going on of everything just to keep things all, all randy dandy, nice and handy. All right. <laughs> mm. All right, hold on one second. Something. All right. Um, <laughs> to wrap this up, I want to wrap it up with what I started off with, talking about addiction. And that is if you feel as though you have problems with addiction, just um, <clears throat> hit us up. <clears throat> And so, um, just you can email me at just Ty. I can point you in the way of some people that I know with this topic specifically. I know a lot as well, and I can answer some questions, but I can point you in the way of some cool people that will be able to help you, whether it's with opioids or drinking too much milk. Or being angry too much. We can be addicted to a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And it, it all deals with, if you want to look at it like this, because you can literally see it all deals with the chemical, chemical imbalances. And I'm not encouraging the use of psychedelic drug use because they are illegal. And we do not encourage illegal things on this channel. What I can do is talk to you about things that I experienced and I can give you real world advice, real world one-on-one -on -one advice, or I can just talk it out on here and it can be real world one on the world advice because we all really are the world and we all have similar problems and we're all going through similar things just at different variants and at different different levels. Like they say, more money, more problems. It's just a different level of problems. Or just a different series of problems. Because the more people you involve yourself with, the more personalities, the more yourself you're encountering. So you're juggling a lot more. But the more peaceful you can do it, the more manageable it is. And that's why you see a lot of these Silicon Valley people and high upper echelon entrepreneurs saying admitting that they microdose and that is it's a it's not really a big deal to admit to it amongst each other but to the world <laughs> all right guys i hope y'all got something out of this this is the side time podcast episode nine if y'all want to join as always just hit me up so i can give you all time but usually it's between seven and nine o'clock i'll start seven thirty to nine o'clock is the start time almost every day so follow us on youtube follow us on instagram that's where i mostly update i have to fix my phone have a lot of doubts with technology lately um if you want to support the stream Check out Patreon, as I said already. All right, let's move on. <laughs> this is Captain Naga asking you. We all tie. Well, do we really tie? Sometimes I don't know, dude. Sometimes I don't know. Until next time, it's Captain Naga. Just telling you to enjoy the rest of your day. And really make sure that you're making the choices that you want to do. As long as you're not hurting anybody else, 
or hurting yourself. Adios. Shout outs to the fam as well.